Hey everyone, welcome back to The Homestead. I am Nadine. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about my quail eggs and lockdown because today we are actually at the end of day 14. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these guys into lockdown. So lockdown means um, that you've got roughly three to four days before you start seeing some pips. Um, and when you go into lockdown, you are removing the egg turner from the incubator. So your eggs no longer need turned at this point and you are increasing the humidity. Um, it says on here to increase it up to 65 to 75%. So this is a lot higher than the incubation period, which is 35 to 45%. In my research, a lot of people have recommended doing a dry hatch, which is where you let the incubator basically run dry a couple days prior to lockdown, which is what I've done. Um, I think I did two or three days where I just let my incubator run at whatever humidity level my room was at, which is about 24%. Um, so it's not dry dry, but I wasn't continue, like keeping the humidity at the 35-45% mark for those two or three days. So today we are going to be taking the turner out. We're going to candle the eggs for viability and we're gonna remove the ones that have no sign of development at all and leave the ones in there that do. Um, and then we're going to put the lid on and we're going to increase the humidity by adding water to the incubator and then we're gonna leave it alone until hatch day, which is so exciting. So let's just get to it. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and pull the lid off. I'm going to unplug the turner because we no longer need that turning. And we're just going to set the incubator top off to the side here. All right, so we've got all of our eggs here. We're going to gently just lift the egg turner so we don't fling any eggs. We're going to set this in here. So something that was also recommended that I don't have at the moment is to put down some like anti-skid material. Um, I believe they use like the stuff that you would put in your kitchen drawers to keep your silverware and spatulas and stuff from rolling around. Um, I know my husband likes to use it in his tool chest so his tools aren't sliding back and forth in the drawer. Um, but I don't have any at the moment, so it might be something I need to add in tomorrow. But that is recommended that way your chicks have something a little bit more uh, grippy than this very smooth plastic bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the lights off now. I got myself a Incubrite Candler light, which has this nice rubber camera's not. There it goes. Where it has this nice like rubber end on it so you get a nice seal around your egg because the uh, light on the incubator itself was being a little sketchy. So I went ahead and I ordered one of these. I can leave a link in the description below for you guys. Um, but I need to turn the lights off so give me a few seconds here. Alright, so let's go ahead and start candling these eggs and see what we've got here. So this one, you can see has no development in it at all, so we're going to go ahead and set that one aside. 
and you can see the difference with this one here. There is some development, and it's hard to tell on my camera because my camera's not picking it up, but there is actually a little bit of movement inside that egg. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this to the rest of my eggs. We're looking for veins and movement as signs of life and development. Some of the eggs are really dark and you're not gonna see a lot, but you want this defined line between the air sac at the bottom where my light is and the darkness above. If you don't have that, like this one I first showed you, where there's no clear line or dark spot in your egg, there was no development in this egg or there was a very short period of development and then development stopped. So this egg is no good. Whereas this egg is good. So we're gonna leave that one in the incubator. There's another one that doesn't have a clear defining. Nope, and one more. So out of all of these eggs, I only found three that had no development at all. So I'd say that's pretty good odds. So the rest of these, I'm just going to space out. It says to leave a little bit of room in between them. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm gonna put my thermometer right in the middle. Give everybody a little bit of breathing room. That is that. We're going to go ahead and put the lid back on. Actually, I'm going to put this up front so I can actually see it. There we go. Put this back on. 
All right, and now to increase the humidity. So we're going to use both of these ports down here, and I'm gonna fill them with some room temperature water so we don't fluctuate the temperature too much. As you can see, it's already going up. We want that number to be between 65 and 75% humidity. So I might also close this latch here to help trap that humidity in there. Now I know come hatch day, you want this to be fully open. That way any carbon dioxide that the chicks give off can escape. Otherwise they will suffocate on their own carbon, carbon dioxide. So we wanna make sure that this is open. This latch right here. Come on, focus. This latch right here, we wanna make sure that this is open all the way on hatch day, or as soon as we start noticing that these have pipped, which means you can see little cracks or beaks poking through, and that way that carbon dioxide can escape. But for now, we want this number to get to, again, 65 to 75%. And that way the eggs are soft and makes it easy for the babies to hatch out of. And that's pretty much it, guys. Um, there's really not a whole lot to do when it comes to incubating eggs, I'm finding out. You just need to give them the perfect atmosphere and let them do their thing. So perfect atmosphere and time. So with candling them and only finding three that didn't have signs of development is really good odds. I'm really happy to see that because um, in my previous video, I shared that I had some issues with the prior incubator that I was using, as well as having a power outage for a couple hours. So I was very concerned with the viability of my eggs after that. Um, but this is looking very good. Um, with every single egg having signs of life and development within it, um, with the exception of those three. So I'm very hopeful that we have a very good hatch on Tuesday. We'll just have to wait and see how many of these sweet little quail babies actually hatch out. I'm hoping that they all do. That would be a wonderful Easter blessing this year. So I am excited. Alrighty guys, so now all I have to do is sit and wait. And that's about all I can do. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. I will keep you guys posted on how this is going and I will probably post a couple of shorts and reels on here and Facebook and in the Facebook group to keep you guys um, up to date as far as what's happening on the daily because things happen faster in social media than on YouTube. YouTube is usually a couple days behind. So if you want to catch live updates, go to inst my Instagram and my Facebook page and the Facebook group. I will link all of those in the description below so that you guys can easily find them and join in and follow along. So I'm very excited, guys. Alrighty, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, go ahead and hit that like button and hit the subscribe button on your way out if you are not already a subscriber this helps my channel out a ton and then make sure you hit that bell for notifications so you know when new things are up on the channel 
Thank you guys so much for watching and remember to grow where you're planted. Thank you.